All right, uh, we have to get back to that breaking news. Uh, we uh, have on the phone now Sarah Minson. She is from the USGS to talk a little bit more about the uh, the earthquake that was felt along the California Nevada border and in parts of San Francisco, Sacramento and the South Bay as far south as San Bruno. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, uh, can you give us an update on where things are right now? I counted 13 aftershocks so far. Um, yes. Uh so there was a magnitude 5.9 earthquake um, this afternoon at the California-Nevada border. There have been a number of aftershocks um, in the near, uh, right near the epicenter. Um, the largest magnitude I'm seeing at the moment is um, about magnitude 4.2, uh, which is not unexpected for uh, an earthquake of this magnitude. And Sarah, we're seeing these clustered kind of right along this area between California and Nevada. What can you tell us about the fault lines where they where they cut through this area? And are they all um, in one central fault line or are there several that are meeting in that location? That's a really interesting question. So it's actually significantly different than what we're used to in the Bay Area. So in the Bay Area, um, what you're seeing is the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate moving to the northwest and the North American Plate moving to the southeast, being uh, with the strain concentrated along a few narrow forts, like the San Andreas Fort and the Hayward Fort. And so in the very, very long term, Los Angeles is coming up to say hello to San Francisco. In east of the Sierra Nevadas, that's inside the North American continent. That isn't actually a boundary between tectonic, any tectonic plates. However, that whole area is under extension. It's being pulled to the rest, and that's what creates the sort of characteristic topography that you see in Nevada of these little hills separated by little valleys. The valleys are being pulled apart and formed as the entire interior moves to the rest. And so um, most of the faulting is very distributed across um, the area east of the Sierras and, and through Nevada. Sarah, I wanted to ask you, uh, earlier we had an initial report and we saw on the USGS map uh, that there was this earthquake that was centered near the Stockton area, near the community of Farmington, and that was later removed. What can you tell us about mm -hmm. uh, that particular incident and why it was removed from the map? It was simply an automatic um, event. So the all the systems run um, completely automated to get information as quickly as possible, and then they are immediately reviewed by humans to mm. see if the automated algorithms are right or what sort of improvements can be made. And it's, it's real, but from time to time, um, earthquakes um, may be detected automatically that are not real earthquakes when you actually have a human go in and take a look at the data. Um, it can be especially actually tricky during an earthquake because when so many seismometers are moving, it can be hard to both find other earthquakes that might be happening and not to see some of that moving as being a separate earthquake, at least for automated systems. And that's why we always have humans come yeah. through and give a better answer. Mm -hmm. Certainly important to have that kind of verification check. One question that I did have, too, is, you know, as we're seeing this, there's that one little dot that's over to the west and then that cluster right there. Um, I'm wondering about that one dot. And then also, Sarah, if you can kind of uh, give us a, a big picture sense. Is this an area that has had a lot of seismic activity in the past or is this something that is relatively new that you're seeing? Um, those are both great questions. One thing that's important to know is that, again, everything will go through a series of uh, revisions and refinements over the next hours, days, weeks. Um, so locations do have uncertainty associated with them. So the locations you see on the map right now are the initial locations. They will be revised, and, and people may even come back and do very specialized analysis that will decrease the uncertainty. But and for the, for the real-time information right now, the uncertainty is several miles on, the, on any of these locations. So I wouldn't necessarily read too much into one of them being slightly to the rest. When the more careful analysis is completed, they may turn out to be all in exactly the same spot or to have some more structure that you can't see. So I wouldn't use the real-time data at the level of, ooh, look, that one is slightly to the rest. That's a little bit too much to ask from the really fast locations. Um, you may know more when we have something that's more refined. Um, Seismicity east of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Well, we did uh, recently have um, a number of, of earthquakes 
um, ranging from the Ridgecrest earthquakes, which were sort of southeast of Sierra Nevada mountains, um, in uh, 2019, around Independence Day. Um, there have been a couple of other ones out in the desert that probably didn't make the news as much because they didn't impact a lot of people. Earthquakes do actually happen fairly regularly in Nevada and east of the Sierras, um, but they often don't impact a lot of people, so a lot of times they sort of fly under the radar. Are you concerned, Sarah, that uh, there could be more aftershocks? Uh, do you anticipate them perhaps even getting larger? Larger earthquakes are always possible, um, but they're also very uncommon. So your rule of thumb is that for every earthquake of this magnitude, which was um, about a magnitude 6, there will be a 10 magnitude 5s and 100 magnitude 4s and 1,000 magnitude 3s. And you would expect to see about 10 of these for every magnitude 7 that you see. So overall, they're very... They're very rare. It doesn't mean that there won't be one. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, uh, two years ago in the Ridgecrest sequence, there was a magnitude 6.4 that was followed by a magnitude 7.1. But that is unusual because large magnitude earthquakes are just very uncommon. And we certainly remember a lot of large magnitude earthquakes here in the Bay Area. Sarah Minson with the USGS, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us and help give a little bit of perspective and context to these quakes that we've seen just uh, happening within the past hour.